So I was looking for my place, and then the, my mother read this article in the newspaper. And said, uh, Courtesy Coffee House looking for additional nights. And so they asked that anybody want to make a presentation to put on to any kind of a program, come on down. And uh, this was a group of ministers. And so Mr. Agnostic Lund went in and uh, made a presentation to all these uh, heads of the churches around this area. They were all with the associated ministries at that time. And uh, I said, I'm not religious. I do open mics. This is what I do. This is what I would attempt to try. And they said, well, that sounds like a good idea. So they let me go ahead and do it. And so I had no, I didn't know any musicians here. I didn't know a musician in the whole Northwest because I had been here for eight, nine years and I wasn't into music when I was up here. I was in Eastern Washington at the time. And uh, so I just put tons of flyers out and information and all those kind of things. And this next performer, the story I heard, he can correct it if it's wrong, but he was just kind of skipping along the street, kicked up a piece of paper and it was a news release for the open mic at Court C Coffee House. And he, along with eight other players, or no, eight players total showed up. And it was an amazing assembly. Along with Tim Noah was Mike Ball, who turned into a great jazz drummer. Uh, Mike Kinder, who still leads two major blues groups here in uh, Tacoma. Um, Mike Dumovich just celebrated his, I believe, 65th birthday a couple of weeks ago. He lives up in Arlington. Uh, Waylon Walt Matheson, the last I heard of him, two women were chasing him for child support. <laughs> I haven't heard anything about him. Tom Kell, who last I knew was in California, um, who was um, doing uh, country music, had made a hit in the country era, and, and then myself. And that was, the, that was the first group of musicians. And it was such a startling first start to get a community started with those eight. And almost every one of them came back immediately the next week. They, and then they started bringing other people. And all of a sudden, within a few weeks, we had to go to a second night. We had so many players because it wasn't any place, particularly for singer-songwriters. But the Seattle Folklore Society hadn't started that kind of songwriter. They were just doing traditional music at that time. So we had a high, kind of had an edge so that songwriters could come in. And, and Tim Noah was one of the very first songwriters uh, doing the original material that came in. And of course, went on to a remarkable career in children's music. Um, in the early years, when we first came in, uh, all the women were in love with him. So it was kind of like Rob said, you know, all these other people, that, the women that I wanted to go chase, they all fall in love with Tim Noah. And that's the way it was like. So it was just great fun. And, and he, he, he already had a, a knack for storytelling, as well as for singing great, writing great contemporary songs. And it, it was almost poetic in some of the things that he did. And then he slowly worked his way into children's music, became the children's performer in our particular era, and, and, and really did a major amount of, of concerts that Diane produced. And she took him not only from this kinds of facilities, but took him into major theaters and got all kinds of people to come out and do major things and did the same thing with Jim Valley. So it really sparked um, that effort by Diane, sparked a whole effort uh, for kids' music in the Northwest, and it was very solid and made careers for a lot of people. Uh, one, we thought one other artist was going to be here. Um, Dave and Cindy were a duo that we that we very much oh, were very much yeah. involved with, and Cindy Heflex, she's now divorced. It's back to Cindy Tierney, was going to come over from uh, from Idaho, but apparently she didn't make it. That's too that's too bad, but anyway, there was a whole bunch of people that just, from that effort of doing children's music, created a whole family that worked out in the whole community. And uh, Tim's gone on, too, to do lots of wonderful songwriting and is performing also now, back with the type of thing that uh, where he's songwriting outside the children's field. And he, at last I heard, I don't know if it's still happening, I'm sure he'll tell us, uh, was doing an open mic thing up in the North End. So he'll probably tell you a little bit about that. He's a great friend, and we don't get to see each other enough. I remember once there was a performance at Canterbury Park, and I was sitting way back up. They kind of had these ridges that you could sit on, 
way up this kind of amphitheater. And Tim at that time, had, he's one of the first ones to use a mic and go out in the audience type of stuff. So he came, I was way in the back, he came up all the way up there and sat on my lap and sang <laughs> his children's song. <laughs> he's always had that connection with people and I have seen him in, the, in his greatest up times and lowest down times and uh, it, he's just a dear friend and it's good to see him again. And he has a, a partner that's gonna be playing also. We welcome Tim Nolan City. <laughs> 